Welcome to our uh, church today, ECC viewers. Uh, thanks so much for being part of our church today. Enormous crowd today. Yeah. Uh, but today is the first sermon for the 2022 year. Uh, I haven't been able to do it because I've been sick and we've been moving and finally we're in our new building and now we can start. All right, let's open in prayer and we'll get started. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for allowing us to be in 2022. Thank you for allowing us to be part of your army that's going to beat down loose for this year and take back our country. Amen. All right, look up on the board for a second. Um, as you can tell, my handwriting is still not the best. Still working on my motor skills. This is what we've gone through for the last three years. 2020 was the Miracle Signs and Wonders year. How many people had Miracle Signs and Wonders that year? Okay, we did, thank God. That was right after I was healed. Uh, 2021 was the year of abundant overflow, especially for the local church. It was the year of the local church who had abundant overflow last year. Well, most of our church. All right, and so, so did we. It was amazing what took place for us. All right, this year, 2022, is the year of the open hand. Whose open hand's that? It's going to be God's. Now, write this down as I go through it. I'm, I've got a lot to cover today, so I cannot be slow. If you're at home, go ahead and get your pen, paper, pencil, iPad, whatever it is you use, get ready. We never start anything without a Bible, piece of paper, and normally we have seed. Okay, so everybody ready? This means yes, this means no. Okay, everybody's ready. All right. Write this down as I say it. The Hebrew letter representing the number 20 means an open hand or giving freely or provision. All right, so 20 means open hand or provision. If you watch the news media right now, the world's in chaos, it's burning. But since I was been born in 1965, has the world been burning? Yeah. Okay, believe it or not, uh, the news used to be worse. We just have more stations now. But if you look back from when I was born in 65 to about 75, few of us here remember it. What did we always watch? Body count, right? Vietnam. It's constant. Every single night, always see what's always dead soldiers, whatever it was, and the body count. And then what was really going on? Civil rights, Martin Luther King was assassinated, Bobby. I uh, still trying to get over John. So many things happened in that 10-year period. It was way worse than what we see now. But most people don't remember that because there's only a few people in this room that do. All right? So the news media's job is to scare you. It's supposed to make you afraid. Remember, you either live in faith or you live in fear. Which one do you live in? Who owns the media? Lucifer. Who owns government? Lucifer. Who owns most every government? Lucifer. So who are you going to live for in 2023? 2022, is it going to be Lucifer or Jesus? All right, he's already promised this is year of the open hand. Now, are all these qualifiers, right? Okay, let's go through those. All right, in the midst, so, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one. I got to stay with the notes today. It's the first time I've preached it in a while. The number 22 is chaos. Not the best speller. And disorder. Congratulations. You're going to be in the year of chaos and disorder. You made it. All right? But is there a bright spot to this whole thing? Mm -hmm. Of course. There always is. Daniel, lying down. I mean, I can go through every single person that went through chaos and disorder, right? Think there was some chaos and disorder when Jesus died? Yeah. One disciple. One disciple showed up at the cross. One. One. How many were there? Left? Ten. One. One. Ten over here. Don't know where they are. And one hung himself. One showed up during chaos and disorder. All right. This is what God's saying directly to you. In the midst of more and more chaos and disorder, I will open my hand and freely give to those who refuse to be shaken by it. And let me read that again. In the midst of more and more chaos and disorder, I will open my hand and freely give to those who refuse to be shaken by it. What's that take? If you're not going to be shaken by something, what's it take? Focus. Why do teams lose ball games? Focus. Why do things get messed up at work? Focus. Why do students not do well on tests? Focus. Why do marriages disintegrate? Focus. 
why do Christians not get everything that God's promised to them? Focus. But what do you have to focus on? God's Word. Now, my wife, if you're listening at home, we do something called a liarless every year. Uh, my wife's termed this Sunday, liarless Sunday. It's not, but um, you know, I kind of have to go with what my wife says because I'm a happily married man. I want to stay that way. Um, what's that comedian that goes, yeah, I'm always going to tell my wife what I want after she walks out of the room. <laughs> uh, Everybody married here can understand that, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I got a thumbs up out of that one. If you're at home, you understand that. All right, so if we focus on God's Word, we have a year of an open hand. If we don't focus on God's Word, what do we get? Chaos and disorder. Which one do you want? What do I ask people all the time? What's the one thing? Jane, what do I ask people? What do you want? There you go. What do you want? What do you want? What? Do you want? Anybody ever had their kids just come in and stare at them? <laughs> All right. They just stand there. And you go, what do you say? What do you want? Right? I used to have students just come in and stand at my desk and stare at me. I'm like, what do you want? Why do we go and just stare at God? Oh, let me retract that. We don't even go stare at God. Right? He's asking, what do you want and what do you say? Mm -hmm. Okay, what do kids always say? What do you want? Mm -hmm. What's your wife normally say when you go, what do you want for dinner? Mm -hmm. And then you suggest something or they say, I don't care. You go, let's go to Wendy's. Well, I don't want to eat there. I thought you didn't care. And then you end up arguing and you don't go anywhere. Tell me, we're not the only couple that ever did that. Okay, good, good. We're not the only couple that did that. So this is the, yeah, everybody, everybody's laughing. If you're at home, and it's probably still funny. Um, you're not married till the neighbors have heard you argue and you haven't gone to eat over arguing what you're going to eat. You know you're married, right? Never happened to me when I was dating, ever. All right, so this year you get to make a choice. I get an open hand or I get smacked with it. Okay. Lucifer's going to smack you with it because he's going to give you all the chaos and disorder you can imagine. Or you can have provision and open hand. Which one you want? Everybody's going to tell me I want the open hand, right? I have a consulting company. How many people lie to me every single day? Oh, all of them. Yeah. Every client I have lies to me. we got a few other business owners here where most of their clients lie to them. I probably just can't lie to Warren because he's got to have the facts to go with it. So he goes, oh, you lied. <laughs> right? Can't lie to Brandon because he's got the proof too. Can't lie to David because he's got the proof too. And then eventually Jonathan's going to go, nope, 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 because you lied to me. And then with you, either they buy it or they don't, right? So why don't we lie? Why don't we lie to God? Why don't we lie to ourselves? Well, it's okay. We're charismatic. Y'all can yell at me if y'all want to. Why do we lie? Makes better. It makes us feel better, and we try to make somebody else feel better. Does God feel better when we lie to Him? No. Because who are we hurting? We're not hurting God. Who are we hurting? Ourselves. Ourselves. So why do we do it? Stupid. Stupid. But why else? Programming. <laughs> Were we taught to lie as kids? Yes. Yeah. Who taught us, though? Not necessarily our parents. Who did teach us? Lucifer. Lucifer in society. Why? We lied to minimize who we were, and we lied to fit in. So why do we minimize ourselves to make other people feel better, or we minimize ourselves and we don't get what we want out of life? Is that what God wanted? Did Jesus ever minimize who he was? No, there's one thing we've got to realize, and I'm going to get to it in a minute. We're the righteousness of Christ. If we understand that one concept, we will never minimize ourselves again. We'll write out exactly what we want, and we'll receive the open hand for 2022. If we realize the gift that he gave us at the cross. If we don't, we get nothing. Which one you want? How many times have we had a boss lie to us? How many people have been in sales? How many times do they look at you and go, well, we're changing the comp plan, but it's going to be beneficial to you? <laughs> That's right. If there were teenage boys telling teenage girls they loved them. How much of that can you take to the bank? Well, you can't. It's a lie. I'm doing this for 
You. It's kind of like we're from the government. We're here to help. That should be the most frightening words you've ever heard, right? Ronald Reagan said that. All right, let's go over what Hebrew scholars said about 20. All right, Hebrew scholars say the number 20 signifies expectancy. If my brother told me he was going to punch me in the face, I could guarantee that was going to happen. I expected it to happen, but I preempted it by hitting him first. We don't go to our creator with expectancy. We go to our creator like we're going to other humans because they lie. Let God be true. Let every man be a liar. We let God be the liar and every man be true. Why don't we believe people? Do people lie? Who controls most people? Lucifer. Who controls the media again? Lucifer. So why don't we let Lucifer tell us the truth and God be the liar? Where did we learn that? That's an open-ended discussion. If you're at home, you can yell through the camera too. That's open-ended. We're charismatic. Where did we learn that? Parents. They didn't do it on purpose. Again, I'm not bashing parents because I was a parent. I am a parent. Not was, but still am. What else? Society. Church. I did not grow up in church, and I feel I think I've been official by that from all the stories that everybody's told me. <laughs> I didn't darken the door of a church till 21 unless I was trying to pick up girls. But I've heard horror stories at church. Why? Isn't that our safe haven? Isn't that where kids should come to feel safe and want to be here and have fun and learn? But what did they learn? What did you learn? That people lie. That people cheat, people steal, and people don't honor their word. So how do we normally figure God's going to be? Like our fathers and mothers. Who lied to us? Yeah. So now we take everybody at church that was flawed and we put that on God. But God's already just told us he's going to open his hand. He's going to give me provision. He loves me and I'm the righteousness of Christ and nothing can change that. Realize this. When you receive Christ, you become righteous. You can never be more righteous than you are the day you receive Jesus. Your faith has to grow, but you can never be more righteous. Now you're identical to the righteousness of Christ. You're seated right hand of the Father and you have all the power that Jesus had while he was here on earth. So why would you minimize yourself by not getting what you want, stating what you want, telling the Father what you want, if you have the righteousness of Christ and you have the identical power He does? Does that make any sense? Do kids have any problems asking us for ice cream? There's two little blondes out there that have no problem asking me what they want, right? They come straight up and tell me. And I'm happy to furnish it. Because they're portraying grandchildren and that's what you do. You spend copious amounts of money on them. Right? <laughs> we have a few grandparents here. Yes. They, yes. I, I got them right here. Yes. That's what grandchildren are for. Spend money. But you've got to think, if I've been guaranteed to open him in provision. Hmm. Let me put this up here because it's a good behavioral illustration. A lot of times, and you see this on TV and everybody likes to watch. Well, the peach doesn't drop anymore in Georgia, right? They stopped doing that. Anybody know why? They've done it. They just wanted to do it this year because of COVID. They were supposed to. Oh, they didn't want to spend the money. We use COVID now to not spend money. It's genius. I'd probably do it too. Um, so we watch, used to be Dick Clark again. I date myself. Uh, I'm going to go with Dick Clark because I don't want to say the other guy's name. Um, <laughs> even though he's from Georgia. You know. All right. So we watch Dick Clark. The ball drops. Everybody cheers. I don't know why you'd want to stand at Times Square for five hours and not go to the bathroom. Because <laughs> once you go in, you can't leave. And it's normally a zero when I was a kid, so that was the ice age. But we act like December 31, ooh, peace dropped, whatever the ball dropped. We get to January 1 and something magical took place. I'm different. Life's different. The world's different. You know what that is a load of. So why don't we act like it's different? We act like something magical just took place and all of a sudden my whole life's going to be different. Is that true? No, that's stupid. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. Who has to change? You. you. Why do we act like everybody else does? Why do we act like something magical just took place? Why do we act like we can, we can say this is what I want this year because people do resolutions. They're a waste of time. Committed, well thought out, 
examples of change that you want to apply to your life and then redo your programming, those work. Resolutions don't. Resolutions, I hope and a wish, and by March, they're all gone. And you just go, ah, I'll do better next year. How many people who are my age, late 50s, have said, I'll do something different next year and just throw through the year away? Yeah. We have one person here who can tell you that because what he does for a living, he can see if they lied or not. It's true because you can't run from facts, can you? Why don't we act like facts don't matter anymore? And I'm not talking about society. I'm talking about us. Man, the older you get, the more facts matter. The facts at 27 are different from 57. All right? My whole life's completely different than 57. So what I want does matter. Nothing changed. I have to do it, and I know I have to do it. But I have a guarantee over here. I've got an open-hand provision if I'm willing to do what it takes. But how many people are willing to do what it takes? Here, let me write the percentage up here. I learned this from Bruce Wilkinson. Bruce is a great teacher, and he taught me well. 1%. 1% will change. 1%. Uh, we got a high school kid here. She can tell you. Middle school. You're high school. We got a high school here that can tell you what doesn't change at high school. How many people from our high school really made it from our graduating class? Believe it or not, in my, it, it was funny because I talked to my choir director. He said in the years from 79 to 83... We had more successful, famous people out of those four years from our high school than they had ever counted. And if you look back through our yearbooks, that is true. How many people made it just from my graduating class? I don't know what was in the water during those four years, but it was miraculous. But the average is, how many people in the church like doing status quo? Just enough. Just get by. I'm going to go this Sunday. I'm going to check that box. God, get off my back. See, we've allowed Christianity to become something we just rotely do instead of a lifestyle. God can't be true, and you'll make him a liar because you're not committed to the process. Right? How many times do we blame the coach or we blame, hey, I was a high school coach, got another high school coach over there. But how many times was it really our fault? Did we spend 20 hours a day during the season for six months not sleeping, going over film, teaching the kids, going over. I used to go over every play. Every play we ran 45 times before we ran it in a game. And guess how many times we ran it right in the game? 15%? Maybe? I'd be like, I've never seen this offense. I don't even know what we're running. We've been running this offense four months. But do you think God ever says, going, what are they doing? I've never seen this. I'm not teaching this. It's not in the 66 books of the Bible. This is where you have to make a decision. Am I ready to do what it takes to win this war against Lucifer and receive this this year? you got to make a commitment. Am I ready? How many people had enough crap happen to them this year to where you don't want to repeat that? This week. Yeah. We've had some members here today that had one of the worst weeks of their lives. I got the flu for the first time in 10 years. But why did I get the flu? I was taking care of my wife at surgery. And what was I doing? Cookies, ice cream, pancakes from a Cracker Barrel. Oh, this won't bother me. I gained 20 pounds while she was out of commission. I gained 20 pounds in two and a half months. Why? I was eating cookies and ice cream. I've earned this. I'm taking care of my wife. I should eat this. Drinking soda. I'm allergic to sugar. Thank God I've lost 15 pounds. I got 20 more to go. Because when I was the sickest, I was at 290. The best way to have is 200. But who did the sickness to him? Well, sugar. Sugar destroys your immune system. I knew better, right? But boy, did it stop me from jumping in the high eyes every night. No. Nope. Man, this is good. Tomorrow I'm going to diet. Then the next night I got high eyes back in my face again. Tomorrow's always a good day. Tomorrow's a day away. I know the song. Who was lying to who? Because I knew tomorrow night it's going to be cookies and ice cream. The next night it's going to be chocolate milk cookies and ice cream. Then the next, I just kept piling on. Then it was potato chips and it was popcorn. I'm allergic to corn. What's wrong with me? 
And then I'm drinking, I drank five sodas one day. I'm not supposed to drink soda at all. And then I wonder why I'm going, <coughs> oh, I don't feel so good. I've got a fever. What did my, one of my buddies say? You're an idiot. <laughs> my buddies love me. They all have single digit body fat. I hate all of them. But he's like, dude, you're an idiot. You did this to yourself. See, I knew I did it to myself, but I still did it. Why? Because that comfort food filled the need, didn't it? Why do we call it comfort food? Mac and cheese. What did I grow up on? Mac and cheese, uh, mashed potatoes, gravy. Everything that will kill you is clog your heart. Right? Homemade ice cream. We used to have the big stack of butter. I think Warren and David may be the only ones that know what that is. Where you ch I churned it and then we dropped it on the plate in a wax paper. Still the best butter you can eat now and it's great for your heart. All right, let's keep going. All right, so provision will come this year regardless of what happens. All hell can be breaking loose around you. There can be carnage from every direction and it won't be allowed to touch you. Because you're the righteousness of who? Christ. Could carnage ever touch him that he didn't allow? Can carnage touch you that you don't allow? No. Could the flu touch me if I didn't do all those stupid things I did to get it? No. You got to remember something. And this is, this is, thank God I used to teach this course. There are viruses in you 24 7. An activator is what destroys your immune system. If your immune system's weak, the virus can take place. If your immune system's strong, you can't touch it. So understand the viruses are always in you. It's up to your system to activate them because viruses don't die. They have to play out. So hmm, biology 101. If you ever went to college, you'll understand that. All right, write this scripture down. Don't write it down verbatim, but write it down. Psalm 145, 16. This is the Passion Translation, because I like, I like this one better because it's more self-explanatory. When you open your hand, it is full of blessings. We're talking about God. When God opens His hand, it is full of blessings. Has anybody ever seen a photo of God's hand that was closed? Daddy's hand's closed most of the time when you ask for money, but not God's. My son asked me one time, do you know any other answer besides no? I said, yes. He goes, that's the only time I've ever heard you say yes. Correct. Because you're not asking me for money or something. Yes, we think our parents are ATMs. You still got checks in there? You can write them, right? When does that light bulb cut on? Well, when you get your first job. All right, write this down. All right, and this is... Uh, uh, I just freelance this one. The open hand satisfies the desire of every living thing. When God provides, He does so liberally. He is the God of more than enough. God is the God of more than enough. All right, so we like to say God is... Everybody shopped at this gas station before? El Chipo? Right? It's normally in smaller towns. I think it's close to south of the border in, in South Carolina if you go up 95. Uh, El Chipo. Do we serve the God of the El Chipo? No, that's me. My wife can tell you, I'm El Chipo. I'm El Tido. I'm very, very good with money. I, I, I give more money away. She'll give me 100 bucks and it's gone in a week because I gave it to people. Because I'm always giving money away. But I'm El Tido. My dad was El Chipo. But why do we make God El Chipo? When he's what? More than enough. See, what we'll do is and I was guilty of this as a father. We don't own the power company. So I may show the money tree in the backyard, right? I've said those things how many times? Well, every day. I go around cutting off all the lights in the house. We don't own the power company. I got El Chipo. Who raised me? El Chipo. How am I going to see God? God's El Chipo. I was programmed to believe that there will never be enough. There's not going to be any provision. There's not going to be any money there based on how I was programmed through my parents. Because my dad... Boy, that wallet, wallet. George Washington gets out of my dad's wallet. It's like, is that light? My dad did not like to spend money. Who else doesn't like to spend money now? 
My wife, professional. Right, honey? Yes. My wife's professional. She's got this. But now, if we'll just go, okay, more than enough, he's got an open hand, it still has to solve one problem, though. What do I want? We were taught as children, could we ask for what we really wanted? Were there limitations placed on us as a child? Yeah, I wanted to be an astrophysicist as a child. I got made fun of and made fun of and made fun of because I started building the whole Star Trek set. I wanted to be an astronaut. So I just threw it all away. I got tired of being made fun of. Now, what do I teach most of the time? Astrophysics. It's still something I really enjoy. Who else has a Batman wedding ring and a Green Lantern ring he wears around? What's this signify? What's Green Lantern based on? Willpower. I'm so disappointed. I can never come back to this church again. Nobody knew that. Um, willpower. Yellow is fear. Green is willpower. Thought process. Anything that you think or dream of can come true. Right? That's how Green Lantern gets his power. And he has to charge it back to his lantern. What's our lantern? Bible. That's where we get all our power. We are powerless without this. All right. All right, in the Hebrew community and commentary, write this down. or uh, I can get this for you guys. It's so hard to write stuff down. God gives liberally, promptly, and at once because all you ever need is already in His hand. He pours out until satisfaction is produced. You just say, it's enough. So you have to tell God, stop, before He stops pouring out. Has that been your life up to this day? Why not? It's not like I'm just making this stuff up for the first time, Right? Did God come down and wake me up last night and go, I've never told anybody this before. You're going to be the first one. So why is 2022 the first time you ever heard this? It's not if you're, I'm your pastor, but are you ready to do it after hearing it? What's the old commentary when you're married? Are you listening? I heard you. Are listening and hearing the same thing? No. No. Why is every woman looking at their husband? Um, wow. No, it's kind of like I've been asleep for 20 minutes and she goes and turns the TV. I was watching that. I've been snoring for 20 minutes. How did I know she turned the TV? Right. I heard you, but were you listening? We heard him. We heard the pastor. We've heard the pastors who grew up in church, but were we listening? Why don't we listen? Don't want to hear it? We think we can do it better? Why? We've screwed up everything our whole lives. Why do we think we have the answer? And realize that if you're the one that started the problem, do you have the answer? No, that's why people call me. What do I do for a living? Fix things. I fix lives, problems, companies. That's what I do for a living. So why do you think you've got a solution if you're the problem? Is, you think it's frustrating for me? Try God. How frustrating is when your kids, you know better, you know they're going to screw their lives up and they don't do what you tell them to do. How frustrating is that? Do you have to let them learn sometimes? Yeah. They got to take the consequences with the decision. God also has to let us take the consequences with the decision. Is it time to stop taking the wrong consequences and go get some of the good ones? Yeah. Is 2022 a good time to do that? I forgot my watch always breaks while I'm preaching. I just want to make sure you all knew that. All right, Ephesians 3.20, write this down. Don't write down the verse. Just go back and look it up. Now until him, and unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly, of, above all we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. All right, so let's think about this. God's going to do over and above more than we could think according to the power in us. All right, let's think about my ring again. How did the Green Lantern get all of his power? This runs out. He has to charge it. If we don't recharge, we get nothing. I mean, how many of y'all spent time pouring over the scripture this week? When I say pouring over, I mean looking up, looking back through the reference materials. See, if you're like me, you have to use your phone because I have to get the easy to read because I struggle to read. So reading King James is not always the easiest thing for me. And then I have to, have to let the little guy on my phone read it to me. And then I have to watch a video connected to it. But because of the way I got through college, I never had studied because if I've heard the lecture, I can memorize all of it. 
that came in handy in college. So if you've been given power, you are righteousness, why don't you plug back into your resource? Realize something. You can do nothing great apart from God. How did you get here? God. How did you receive everything you've ever had? God. Why do you think you can do it alone now? But how many people poured over this this week? How many people act like this, our time together, is a box check? You go out and lie to everybody and go, yeah, I believe in Jesus. No, you don't because you didn't do anything this week to prove it. What happens if I say my, I love my wife and then go home and treat her poorly? I love my kids but never spend time with them. I enjoy my job but I don't do anything when I get there. How many people know people like that? Of course, nobody in this room's like that or nobody that's watching, but we know other, it's always everybody else, right? You know, we used to sit in the pew going. How many people got Pat mad at pastors? I remember one time I went up to my pastor, I was like, Really? You get a preset directly in media day? <clears throat> and he just busts out laughing. He goes, you're such an idiot. He goes, you know, the only one in here had to hear that message. The Holy Spirit directed it at you. That's when I was a young Christian. I didn't know anything. I thought they inducted me into a cult. David can tell you that. I thought David and all of his friends conspired and put me in a cult when I got saved. Because <laughs> I couldn't drink. I couldn't do drugs. That's what I do. I'm a professional at, at using drugs. I can't do them anymore. I was in a cult. That's what it was. No, it's power of Jesus. I'm finally righteous. I didn't know what that was. The problem is we got people who've been going to church their whole lives that don't know what this is. Because they never went over to look at this. Because again, we're mailbox Christians, man. We're waiting for God to send it to us in the mail. Right? <laughs> if God wants me to have it, he'll drop by the house today and give it to me. No effort on my part. <clears throat> he should just give it to me. Can you bring me some water? If he wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. What happens if we approach dating like that? If they want to date me, they'll drop by the house. They've never met you. How are they going to drop by the house? Well, God will tell them, let the Lord lead you. All right, that works in China when you have an underground church and the Holy Spirit has to tell everybody where to meet. I don't know if everybody knows the story of that. In Russia, the underground church was never allowed to put anything in print and they couldn't tell anybody where the meeting was going to be. So they would pray to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would tell the pastor where to go, and then everybody showed up. They never missed one meeting, never missed one person. Because the power of the Holy Spirit is real. We just don't realize that. We're the most spoiled country in the world, and we don't, we've never really faced hardship. I've had hardship, trust me, but nothing like they have in Africa, Eastern Europe. We don't understand what it's really like to go through something bad. Brazil, Argentina. Haiti. That's why we have less miracles than any other country. Because we've never really seen pain. Because our broke is still driving a brand new car and nice TV and you have heat and power and water. So, next. All right. Malachi 3.10. I'm going to go over more of this next week. But it's the promise that comes with this year. I'm going to go over why this is so important next week. But... Bring ye all your tithes to the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now where, herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I'm going to pour you out so much stuff, there's no room to receive it. But, here's the thing. Are you ready to take the deal? I feel like Howie Mandel. Deal or no deal? <laughs> all right? Deal or no deal? What I used to do before I gave somebody a jersey? You're going to take the deal? You're going to do everything it takes to be on this high school basketball team? If you're one of the 13 going to wear that jersey, you've got to do what it takes to wear that jersey. Are you willing to put on the Jesus jersey this year? If you don't, this is what you get. And guess what? I'll know if you put on Jesus' jersey in about four weeks. Right? I'll know which team you wanted to play on. Because I'm going to watch your life disintegrate. I'm going to watch your paycheck go away. I'm going to watch all these things go. Or do you want this? Because this is a guaranteed promise if you just do what he tells you to do. Guaranteed. Right up there with my brother guaranteeing he was going to hit me in the face. Before the end of the day, he was going to pop me. I could depend on that. 
We don't think we can depend on God because we couldn't depend on our parents, or our grandparents, or whoever took care of us. How many people in here had their parents let them down? Some of us came from nice homes. We don't like you. Believe it or not, God, for our generation, 40% of the people came from nice homes. I'd say that now somewhere around 15. Guess who did it? My generation. We let you guys down. We were terrible parents. All right. Here's the key. The Holy Spirit will guide you in the things to come for the year. The Holy Spirit will guide you in the things to come for the year. Who? Oh, that guy in Acts. That we don't talk about in a lot of churches. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's the only way you're going to get guided on this. Because the Holy Spirit's where we get power. Acts 2. To me, Easter and Pentecost are the two best days, right? But you can't have one without the other. It's like uh, chocolate and peanut butter. Is that a Reese's cup? That's Reese's cup, right? Chocolate and peanut butter. They go together. Holy Spirit and Jesus. Jesus resurrected, but 50 days later we get the Holy Spirit. Because that resurrection is no good without the Holy Spirit. Because that's our power. That's our salvation. Then we have power. That power comes over here because without that we can't have power. Who wants power? Who wants the ability to get rid of the darkness at any time they choose? Who's cast out devils? Yeah. Who's seen Satan? Who's been to hell? Twice. I know why you need the Holy Spirit. So God's just said that the whole world's going to look like it's going to collapse this year. And if you watch any news station, not just CNN, all of them, you'll think the whole world's collapsing, right? I was forced to watch some of MSNBC the other day at the doctor's office. I always put my headphones on so I don't hear it. But it's gloom and doom and all lies. Nothing but lies. But who do they work for? Lucifer. So now that we know the whole world's going to collapse around us this year. It's going to get worse. But we have the power to do something about it. But we have to exercise that right. Are we going to exercise that right to do it? Are we? Again, in about four weeks, I'll be able to tell. Where are you going to be? Where are you going to be? All right, let's keep going. Here's the key. It's always been the key. Nothing's going to change. You have to do this. Boy, this is going to rub some people the wrong way. I won't point everybody out here who has a problem with that. Shut up. Don't get on Facebook and tell everybody you're sick. Don't ask for prayer. Most of those people don't know how to pray anyway. <coughs> right? Who should you go to first? God. He made you. He's got the warranty. What do we do every time something happens? We call the warranty company, right? Who owns our warranty? Who put you together? Go to the warranty manufacturer first. Go to the manufacturer first. What am I going to ask you if you call me? What three scriptures you got and did you call for God first? And then what happens if you say no? I hang up on you. <laughs> right? There's several people who have received that treatment from me here. Why? Because I can't do anything to you talk to the guy who made you. I don't have any power. I only have power through the Holy Spirit. And what did the Holy Spirit just tell me to do? For hang up and you call the manufacturer. You call God first and you can talk to me. If you get that out of order, I will not speak to you. Why? They ain't going to do any good to talk to me without talking to him first. I don't have his authorization to help you. But what do we always do? Open our mouth. Three wishes. Remember. As you say, let it be so. By law of, of, of quantum physics, whatever you speak must materialize in a natural. What are you speaking? Is it gloom and doom? Is it death? What is it? What is it? Are you speaking God's word? I've gotten better in traffic, haven't I? Yes. I've gotten better. I haven't tried to kill everybody. <laughs> Keep it this way. And, and write this down. Failure is not your future. Now, is that a lie or is that true? 
Failure's not your future if you're focused on this. Failure's your future if you don't pick this up. Because who are you working for if you don't pick this up? Lucifer, yeah. Lucifer's the father of lies. I worked for that team once, remember? They lie. And then if you don't do what they tell you to do, they try to kill you. All true. God's never tried to kill me. Lucifer has. So why wouldn't I believe the one who manufactured me? Failure's not my future if I'll just focus on what he told me to. But it takes focus. It takes focus continuously 24-7. All right, Isaiah 54, 17. This is from the... Uh, I think it, no, this may be from the message. No weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall condemn. This is the heritage of the saints of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. See, whatever you say against someone has to come back on who? You. That's why I don't want to talk about people. Whatever you say comes back to you. Whatever they say against you comes back to them. That's why I'm joyous when other pastors have something bad to say about me. I'm in the club. I remember Bruce Wilkinson looked at me one time. This was hilarious. I told him about some things. He goes, it's about time you join the club. What, you think you're the only one? You're special? He said, Scott, any of us have anything really good to do? The demons have tried to kill. But you have the power to beat them down every single time. You're part of the club now. That was several years ago. But it was true. I'm in the club now. All right, write this down. Luke 10, 19. This should be with you at all times, everywhere you go, in a notebook somewhere. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on scorpions and serpents, and over all the power of the enemy, nothing shall be any means hurt you. What are serpents and scorpions? Those are demons. Ephesians 6. Go back and see who you're fighting. They're demons. You have power over every single evil power in the world. Remember, depression, fear, doubt... All these things have a demon assigned to them. It's not just an emotion. It's a spiritual attack against you from a demon. Treat every single thing like it's spiritual and you won't have any problem. Ask Smith Wigglesworth about that. He treated everything like it was a demon. And he just cast it out. Psalm 104, 28. And this is about the open hand of good. That thou givest them thy gather, thou openest thy hand, they are filled with good. Every single thing in God's hand is good and He wants to give it to you. Are there times that we want to give to our kids, but we can't? Yeah. And sometimes we don't ever get to give them what we want to, do we? But whose fault's that? Is it ours or theirs? It's theirs. Are there times that God wants to just overflow blessing on you, but He can't? Why? See, if you're not committed to this, what you really want could destroy you. How many people have we seen money destroy? Remember, money doesn't change people. It just amplifies who you were before you got it, behaviorally speaking. So all these, look at athletes, because we always use athletes, because 80 to 95% ended up broke three years out of the league. And that's true worldwide. Premier League, doesn't matter. Why? They never got the substantial learning they needed to handle it. But what's it always go back to? Programming. But Christian athletes normally don't go broke. Do the stats on that one. Most of them, Christian athletes have all their money. If they were saved prior to leaving the league. If they were saved afterwards, normally they got saved after they lost everything. We've seen all those stories, right? It's sad how many NFL players have gotten broke. All right, now, let's go over what's going to happen if you don't do this. Because God's if then, right? If you do this, I'll do this. If you do this, you get this, right? Mom and dad were that way too, right? If you're home by this time, my dad was pretty easy, man. My dad would go, all right, I need you home by one. You know, my dad was pretty flexible and stuff. But if it was after one, my dad didn't holler and scream. He just he met me out in the yard one day. That scared me. I got home at three. My dad's sitting on the back porch steps, and it is pitch black dark. We lived in the middle of nowhere. I never saw him. I stepped on him. He just wanted to see if I could see him. He looked at me. He goes, what time is it? All right. How many hours is that? And he just deduced. And he said, all right, go to bed. That was the end of the discussion. But did it have to be hollered and screaming to me know that he was for real? No. Did I do what he told me to do? Oh, yeah. My dad was scary. Everybody was afraid of my father. Everybody was afraid of my grandpa. They were tough people, tough to deal with. But my dad never raised his voice. 
You don't have to. Some people don't need to raise their voice. Is God ever going to holler and scream at you? Hmm. God's going to sit quietly and he's going to wait on you to come back and he's going to go, are you ready to listen now? All right, this is what's going to happen coming up because we were picked to rule and reign in the last days. You guys were specifically picked to live during these days because he knew you could have the power through righteousness of the Holy Spirit and Christ to be able to rule and reign. Why can't we do that? Let's do this. All right, 2 Timothy 3, 1. Now, I want you to read all of 2 Timothy 3. Don't just stop every time I give you a verse. But understand this, that in the last days, dangerous times of great stress and trouble will come, difficult days that will be hard to bear. Do you want to live in that? Or do you want to live above that? All right, here's what's coming. Psalm 46, 6. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, and the earth melted. Is that happening right now? Do the heathens get mad about everything? Are people raging on TV every single day? TikTok, whatever this stuff is. I've never used TikTok. I'm just having to use that reference today. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is. Especially on the news. Are people raging? Are people mad all the time? Mad everything. There's always something to be angry about. Everybody's Mr. Furies. Right? <laughs> if you've ever seen Mystery Men, you'll get that reference. Kingdoms are being moved right now, right? In the right way or the wrong way? You know why we're in this debacle right now? Because the church didn't do anything. Church stood and watched. Church is closed when they should have stayed open. We never closed. Ever. Why? I knew this was bogus anyway. I taught a class doing it. I knew what the government was up to. I knew what Lucifer was trying to run. But we got a lot of mega churches that closed. Why? If something's bogus, they can't enforce it. People haven't figured that out yet, have they? When you say no, when you go, we're done, then it stops. Right? Bullies can't bully you if you go, that's it. How many times do you think I ever got bullied? No, I didn't. I may be little, but you only bothered me one time. So how do you think I treat Lucifer? You're only going to bother me once. Because now I'm going to send Jesus. And Jesus has got an undefeated record. See, but why do we try to fight the battle instead of sending Jesus? He's already told me, you can't lose if you'll just take me with you. Everybody ever had that big friend you always took to every fight? <laughs> I had like five of them. They were like my brothers, so I just took them with me. Nobody ever bothered me. Hey, I'm bringing my friends. I was the worst one out of the five of us, though. They're like, we're big. He's not the one you want to make mad. Do you want to make God mad? What happens when God sees his children being mistreated? Ooh, you don't want to be on the receiving end of that. You don't ever want to mistreat one of God's children because he's a loving father and he settles scores. All right, here's what's coming. Isaiah 24, 10 through 11. How many years ago was this written? Yeah, when you hit the thousands, he told us what was coming. We're just not smart enough to listen, are we? How many times have you been in a relationship and you go, you know, if you do that, we're going to break off. We're, we're done. Anybody done that before? If you do this, I'm breaking this off. Were they good for their word normally? Normally it's women telling people that, but women are normally good for their word. Is God good for his word? But is Lucifer good for his word? I'm going to destroy you. Is he ever going to back up off that? Is his job on a daily basis to destroy you? All right, Isaiah told us what was coming. The earth is polluted by its own people. Sound about right? Who have broken its laws. Disrupted its order, violated the sacred eternal covenant. Therefore, a curse like cancer ravages the earth. Sound we there? Its people pay the price of their sacrilege. They dwindle away, dying one by one. No more wine, no more vineyards. That means no prosperity. Uh, provision, etc. No more songs or singers, because they're all in despair. The laughter of the castanets is gone. The shouts of celebrants gone. The laughter of the fiddles gone. More parties with toast and champagne. Serious drinkers gag on their drinks. We're seeing that, right? Can't assume enough, can't do enough, can't take enough. Um, the chaotic cities are unlivable. How many unlivable cities we got right now in the United States? New York, Detroit. I mean, I can keep going. Because they have no manner of law. You go, can't, can't send packages out of Amazon now in L.A. 
because they're jumping on the trains and taking all the passes as they go through. Notice we didn't say UPS. We only said Amazon, right? All right. <laughs> Every house is boarded up. Go to Detroit. Half the city is boarded up. Beautiful city, by the way. I think Detroit's probably one of the prettiest American cities we have. It is beautiful until they decided to burn it down. But people ride in the streets for wine. They doing that right now? Yeah. But the good times are gone forever. No more joy for this old world. The city's dead and deserted, bulldozed in the piles of rubble. That's the way it will be on this earth. This is the fate of all nations, an olive tree shaken clean of its olives and a grapevine pit clean of its grapes. That is your future without this. Which one you want? Your 2022 can be the greatest year of your life or the worst thing in a curse. Something like you've never seen. Which one you want? People always go, man, I want the good one, right? I mean, people come and see me and pay me the outrageous prices I charge and don't do one thing that they swore they would do when they leave my house. Why? Why do they waste my time in theirs? And I'll take the money. That's why I make people pay me up front. But why? Why lie to me? I'm here to help you. Because you lie to yourself. Why do you lie to yourself? It's the only way that you can get through the day. But if once you're finally honest with yourself, can you go on and grow? Can God do something powerful in you? You realize that after every sermon, I do film time. I go back and go, did that wrong? Did that wrong? Did that wrong? Should have done this? Should have used scrap scripture? Didn't explain that well enough. I treat myself like I'm still coaching. I don't pick out the good, I only pick out the bad. As coaches, did we ever pick out the things we did well? No. Oh. I would gloss over it. All right, y'all do that. So let's get back to what we got to fix. Right? Because in practice, if you don't fix those things, what happens? You're going to go lose again. Because guess what? It carries over. So since you were somebody in December, you didn't magically become somebody different in January, right? So you have to sit and think, what do I need to change about me immediately to be able to live in an open hand society for 2022? Or do I want to go through everything from... The previous scripture. You know, it's, it's kind of funny that Isaiah knew what was coming. How many years ago? Thousands. He was a powerful prophet. But have we seen this every hundred years? Yeah. Why do we see it every hundred years? They may read through the whole testament just like speed, speed read it. You up and down, up and down, up and down. He loves us, he loves us not. He loves us, he loves us not. He punishes us, he's not punishing us. You know, it, how many thousands of years did they go through that? All the stupidity that they did. Are we still doing it? Yeah. Do we have time for secret friendly gospel right now? Do we have time to make people feel good? Is it my job to make you feel good about you? No, it's never going to happen. Was it my job to make my team feel good about who they were? Not during practice. But after, after practice I did because I loved them and hugged them and told them I loved them. That's why they let me yell at them for the two years, two, two hours on practice floor. They knew I loved them. They knew at the end of the day, if, if, if somebody else didn't love me, my coach loved me. At the end of the day, I know God loves me. He can yell at me. He can discipline me. Because if I can't take correction, I can't fix it. If I can't fix it, this is my life. I don't want this life. I've had this life. It's no fun. Anybody else had this life? Okay, I've just told you this year's going to be one of the worst years from a societal standpoint that will ever take place. But you can operate completely oblivious to what's going on around you. Are you in on that? Good, write this down. Numbers 1418. I'm going to use New Living on this one. Everybody ready? The Lord is slow to anger and filled with unfailing love. Thank God. What happens if he was quick to anger? I'll walk around going, why didn't you kill us sooner? A lot of times, right? Just go to Walmart and you'll go, Lord, why do you have so much patience with us? <laughs> Drive to Atlanta. Lord, I'm really feeling the patience. <laughs> All right. All right. Forgiving every kind of sin and rebellion. He's willing to look past it all. But he does not excuse the guilty. He's getting ready to explain who that is. He lays the sins of the parents upon the children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations. Here's our guarantee. If you don't repent, yeah, repentance is still a thing. Daily would be good. 
If you don't repent, get right with God, every sin that you have will go to your kids and to their kids and to their kids. But if you repent or follow Christ, you get a thousand generations. Which one do you want? The four generations of bad or a thousand generations of good? I lived out the fourth generation of bad with my family. I stopped it. Remember that thing called generational curses? It's really generational behavioral patterns. I stopped them. Are you going to be the generation that stops yours? That's a good question, right? All right, Psalm 31, 23. Oh, love the Lord, all you his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentiful rewardeth the proud doer. Faith without works is? James got that one right, didn't he? Who was James again? Jesus' half-brother. Do you think anybody knew Jesus better than James? Is also his mortal enemy till he died. Of all things, you bring your mortal enemy with you in the ministry. He's seen everything, doesn't believe anything, that you come back. And then he's probably the most dedicated disciple out of them all. Can you imagine what it was like when James went to see him in heaven? I mean, amazing. He gets to see his brother. And Jude, too, because Jude got a book, too. So you let at least two of your brothers have books. And then your sisters marry pastors who go out and play them how great you are. And all these guys knew him before he died. Can you imagine being the brother-in-law of Jesus? You walk around going, I'm his brother-in-law. I used to hang out with him. Pretty cool, ain't it? Now you didn't get to do that. Why? What was James always telling him? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Paul, don't be afraid. Because what was happening? James was in charge of the church of Jerusalem. Think there was a little persecution going on? Because by 70 AD, what, what got torn down? Temple. And then they got what? Dispersed. And James was the one trying to keep it all together. Now remember, John's the only one that made it to old age. All right, next one. And this you have to remember. John 16, 13. Remember, if you want to learn about the Holy Spirit, read 13, 14, 15, 16. Last night, Jesus was on earth. He wanted to make sure everybody understood who the Holy Spirit was. Howbeit when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you in all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show these things to come. Who also operated that way? Jesus. Only do what I see the Father do, only say what the Father says. You cannot do this without the power of the Holy Spirit. Did He make that clear enough for you? So is it prompting you enough to go do something about it, though? Because what happens? The same, same reason why multi-level marketing, people try to have many meetings. Life gets in the way. By the time we're, we've gone to work on Monday, we've had a tough day, Lucifer's gotten us off track, Mark 4, and we've stopped listening to God, and now we're all mad again, and then we just fall right back into what? The life we had. And go right back into the program we've been running. That's why this has to be a conscious day-to-day -day effort of what we're focused on and what we want out of this life. Or 2022 will be the worst year of your life. Again, you get to choose. Unfortunately, we have a high schooler here who's getting to see it played out every day at high school. Right? Yeah. I can tell you right now, I'm glad I went to high school in the 70s and 80s, right? Who else is with me? Someone, when did you graduate? Warren, when did you graduate? I still think that was the best time to be in high school, don't y'all? It really was. We had fun. And I'm not talking about drugs and alcohol. I'm just talking about fun. Everything was open. Everything was cool. All right, Romans 8, 31, 37. I got to come back to Paul, brother. All right, what shall we say then to these things? If God be with us, who can be against us? If the manufacturer of your body can be with you, who can stand against you? You. Remember, you're always going to be the problem. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all of us, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He's willing to give you everything because he didn't withhold the one thing he could have. Remember, we have the blessing of Abraham. Abraham went first. Jesus went second. It's covenant. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect if God that justifieth? Who is he that commandeth this? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of the Father, who else mark, make its intercession for us. We're at the right hand of the Father. He intercedes at our behalf at all times. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nobody. 
Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution or famine or nakedness, peril or a sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more conquerors than him that loved us. Or more than conquerors than him that loved us. Because I have his power, nothing can beat me. How many times do you say that to yourself every single day? Because I have his power, nothing can beat me. I'll operate above all my circumstances if I'll stay focused on him. How many times do you say that every single day? If you're not, you ought to start. All right, next. Passion translation, Psalm 30, 12. It's all about praise. Remember, once you pray, what's your next thing to do? Praise. How annoying is it for somebody to come back to you every five minutes ago? Are you really going to do that? Are you really going to do that? By the time they've annoyed you, do you do it? No, you go, I ain't doing it now. Right? You might have that happen. Yeah, oh yeah. I'll be like, I ain't doing it now. Shut up. I already told you not to come back and bother me again. Does God like it when we do that? No, but if you come back in and I go, man, thank you so much. But thank you so much gets you a lot more, doesn't it? You think God's any different? All right, Psalm 30, 12 in the Passion Translation. How could I be silent when it's time to praise you? Now my heart sings out, bursting with joy, a bliss inside that keeps me singing. I can never thank you enough. You only can never thank people enough if they've actually gone through with what they said they do and they're good for their word. If they're not good for your word, you're not going to thank them a lot, right? So why don't we treat God like he's not good for his word? Why aren't we thanking him continuously for the blessings that he's already said he's giving us? Only you can answer that question in your life. All right, Hebrews eleven six. Remember, what's our currency in heaven? Faith. George Michael, faith to faith to faith. Wasn't singing about the same faith, but he said faith a lot of times in that song. Faith. You had faith in those chairs that they would take your weight when you sat down in them. I have faith in the camera. I have faith in Andrew and Sarah that they get it right. I have faith in my car when I started up there to come over here. So I you mean to tell me I trust a chair, a camera, people in a car more than I do God. How do we grow to love people before we get married? We spend what with them? Time. <coughs> Unless you're one of those stupid shows where they get married after a week or something. They can't figure out why they hate each other. <coughs> right? Unless you're like this one couple. They went on a date. It was their second date. They got quarantined together in China. Now they're engaged. They decided they love each other. <laughs> hey, if you can be quarantined together or wallpaper a bathroom together and still get married, it's success. All right. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Will he or will he not do what he says he's going to do? <coughs> There's no room for doubt. Remember that guy? What's the, the guy that walked across the Grand Canyon on a rope? Well, Linda. Yeah. Did he have to have a little faith in God to do that? Well, I ain't doing it. I don't even like to stand over the edge. I'm not getting on a rope with a pole. I can do this. No, I can't. Do you think he had to build up his faith in God to be able to do this? What was he doing the entire time he was up there? He was praying and using scripture. Why? He knew he wasn't going to get across on his own. All right. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. I'm only going to read the first part of it because that's all you need. Awake to righteousness. Remember, you won't minimize yourself if you realize that you're the righteousness of Christ. Remember something. Here's God on his throne. Am I right? Okay. Jesus. Where are you sitting? Me. I'm sitting with Jesus at the right hand of the Father. I am the righteousness of Christ. Remember, I can't be any more righteous than I did when I got saved. I can get more holy. I can, I can grow faith, but... I'm seated here. Why don't I act like it? Does royalty always act royal? Royalty. Real royalty. Yes. You're taught. It's bred into you how to act. Why don't we know how to act? Well, if I don't spend time with God, I don't spend time in the scriptures, and I don't have role models, because we have to have role models. Do I think anything can beat me? Y'all know me well enough. 
No. I've never seen a game I could lose. I've never seen Lucifer have a battle I couldn't win against. I don't believe I can lose. Is that a good trait most of the time? Absolutely. Do people who come see me believe they can beat anything once they leave? Yeah, because I don't have any doubt. But my doubts, I don't, I'm not validating me, I'm validating who saves me. Because I know with his power I can't lose. With my power I can. I was a loser before Jesus, trust me. Now I can't lose because I don't identify through me, I identify through him. See, my identity is not in me anymore, it's in Christ. And if my identity is now in a perfect human being, in a perfect Savior, in a perfect Creator, and now I can't lose because I get to identify with Him. You won't minimize yourself anymore if you identify through Jesus. Because now it's not about you at all. All right? All right, Hebrews 10, 38. And my righteousness once will live by faith, but I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. Whew. Faith, you get everything. No faith, you get nothing. The deal's off. You cancel out the deal by having no faith. Did God cancel the deal or did you? You. All right, 1 John 5, 4. You should keep this verse with you at all times. So whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Every victory you can't lose with God. Cannot lose. Four quarters in a ball game. Let's look at one last night. A team won on a last second field goal. The great thing about playing four quarters is you have four opportunities of 15 minutes to get it right. Soccer, you have 45 minutes and 45 minutes. In baseball, you have as many innings as you need, up to nine and then more if you're tied. We have opportunities to get this right. Because you're losing in the fourth, I mean in the first, does that mean you'll lose in the fourth? No. So why don't we treat everything like the first quarter? No, 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 no. God's patient. God's with this. If you stay with Him, you can't lose. The victory is going to be yours. David's brother went through something years ago. I'm not going to go into it. But it called patience and faith. And through patience and faith, he was victorious. Because he never lost sight of who? God. No, I'm a witness. God's got this. But how many times do we get our mouth going and get in the way and God can't do the victory because you won't let him because you're standing in the way? We were laughing the other night. We like to watch uh, movies from the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And we like James Cagney and uh, Edward G. Robbins. And they always did gangster movies, right? And then somebody always goes, no, don't shoot him. And the guy that's told not to shoot him gets killed because he didn't shoot him, right? My wife would be like, shoot him as many times. Empty the gun on him. That's why I married her. <laughs> See, God's saying, empty the gun on Lucifer. Amen. What's your bullets? Scripture. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Sharper than. It's not a sword, but it's sharper than. So as soon as you use the word on Lucifer, guess what he has to do? Oh, he runs for cover because he's a chicken. Now, God has already said, I'm going to provide for your family during chaos and disorder if you'll just do what I ask you to do. How many of us have families? Well, all of us. Do we want our families provided for? Now, remember, this coding goes over your kids, too. And I'll go over their kids. Remember, a thousand generations if you follow Christ. All right. Not only that, and I, wanted to, I had to put this in the notes, you're going to see things accelerated. So now you're going to see things coming faster and faster and faster to you, and you don't have to wait as long. But what's the catch? you got to be in His Word on His daily basis, and He wants a relationship. Now, I have buddies. I've got one of my buddies, one of my best friends in the whole world. I talk to him every six, seven years. But we pick right back up where we left off. And we've been friends. He's probably my longest-running friend. I mean, when he goes back to childhood, that's a, that's a friendship. And the girl who cuts my hair, we've been together since I was five. And then people in my Bible study, been together since we were five in North Carolina. Love, faith in them. Now, if I know things are going to speed up, if I stay in the Word, I listen to God, I quote the Scripture, and I proclaim what I want, would I be an idiot not to do that? Yeah. And again, in four weeks, I'll know if you're doing it. Also, does our church need to grow for what we're teaching? Not because we're here, but because we're teaching God's Word, right? 
So how many people have been praying for church growth? How many people have gone out and told everybody, everybody you see how great our church is? How wonderful I am. How friendly the pastor is. If you're at home, nobody leads with how friendly the pastor is at this church. Trust me. I'm nice. I'm not always the friendliest. I am on the spectrum, so I do have my hang-ups. All right, Acts 20, 24. None of these things will move me. But none of these things will move me, neither count my dear unto myself, that I may finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ to testify the gospel of grace of God. You want to testify the joy and the grace of God? Do this. When everybody else is all their all their life has gone to hell, why are they prospering? Why don't they have a new car? Why is their house paid for? Why is he not? Why is he making more money? Why is he? Why do? See, you want to be the talked about family, but because you're blessed. Is there any other way to get people to Jesus faster than that? Hey, man, what are you doing? Same thing in real estate, whatever it is, sales. Who do we always go talk to? The number one producer. Why? We want to know what they're doing. Warren, you go to CPA conventions. And we all have to for hours, right? So we have to go anyway. But why do we also go? There's always one guy we want to hear talk. Because he's got something I want to learn. Same thing with pastor conventions and stuff. I want to go, especially to Believer's Convention, because who are my mentors? Kenneth Copeland, Jesse Duplantis, Jerry Savelle, Keith Moore. Those are my mentors. Well, I went over there. Greg Stevens, who's a wonderful guy. I learned more Hebrew from Greg than anybody. Yeah, I want to go be around my mentors. Where do you think I got this proclamation for the year? My mentors. God didn't download this to me, downloaded it to them, and I downloaded it to y'all. But is this worth listening to? Is this worth receiving? All right, next verse. Psalm 104, 28. That thou givest thy gather, that openest thy hand, they are filled with good. Your open hands filled with good and you want to download it to me continuously any way you can get it to me. But what do you have to say to yourself all day? God's got an open hand. He's downloading good to me continuously. Why wouldn't you want to say that all day? Because it'll reprogram you to expect the good from everything. What do I teach? Human programming. All right, next one. Romans 8, 28. Got to get to Romans, baby. Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's Spirit is right alongside helping us. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of the wordless sights, sighs, aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves. He knows our pregnant condition, keeps us present before God. That's why we can be sure that every detail of our love for God is worked into something good. It's from the message translation. Who better than Paul to be able to write that? Now, this, this week, if, if you're smart, you'll go back and read all of Hebrews. Especially the Hall of Fame 10 and 11 of belief. Why do you want to do that? Well, you want to know what to believe and why you should believe it. Let's look at Cheyenne and Michael's um, generation. There's a generation of believing in nothing. Why? School lies to them. Teachers lie to them. People lie to them. Our generation lied to them. Everybody lied to them. The news is nothing but filled with lies. TV shows are nothing but corrupt. Anybody looked at network TV lately? I don't watch TV. And this past week was the John Wick Marathon, so I had to watch TV. I like John Wick. Good again, evil. Um, Keanu's the man. I have not seen commercials in years. Because I don't watch TV, I don't watch the news, I never turn it on. I don't watch ball games anymore. Since I've stopped coaching, I stopped watching ball. I never know what's going on in the world. I had to watch commercials this time. No sound. Has anybody seen commercials lately? We're living out what Isaiah said on commercials. They've sexualized everything. they translized everything. Everything that's not good or conducive to a family or a church, they've done. But y'all keep buying their products. Why? I will not purchase from anybody that's done anything to the Christian church. Same reason why I won't watch the NFL. The NFL has set itself apart from the church and refuses to acknowledge that we exist. And every single thing they do is against the church. I will never spend money on the NFL, won't go to a game, NBA, Major League Baseball, or the National Hockey League. Why? They set themselves against the church, and when you do that, I'm out. They don't get my money, nothing. Don't even get me started on NASCAR, because that's my family. 
and all my friends. And they've destroyed NASCAR too. Because NASCAR now set itself against the church. Why do we keep patronizing things that have said, I don't want no Jesus and I don't want no church? I don't think I've seen a Super Bowl in five or six years. Will I watch it this year? No. What's the halftime show built on? Lucifer. Did you see that halftime lineup? Everything corrupt, everything against the church and against women and cop killing and everything there is going to be wrapped up by the, by the Super Bowl. Now, they've been doing it for years. They just threw it in your face this year. And now guess who's got a documentary? Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson had to do a good documentary about her life because she screwed it up at what event? Super Bowl. But now you'll see it this year. You'll see that very act this year at the Super Bowl and nobody will say a word. Why? Because we just don't care because the church laid down. The church abandoned us last year. And I'm talking about the church as a whole, not us. We didn't lay down. So this year, if you want to be free, if you want to be free, how many Congress people did you call this week? How many should you? Remember, Zaxby Chambliss used to hang up on me because they knew my voice. They hated me because I got on the radio and bashed them all the time. Why? Because he said one thing and did another. How do you know a politician's lying? Mouse move. Why are we standing and watching corruption and going along with our lives? Because it didn't bother me today. Why are we letting businesses cancel Christian men and doing nothing about it? My pillow is a good example. Kroger, they got a whole list. You shouldn't shop in any of those stores, which we don't. I hate Kroger. Don't, don't send me letters. I just don't like people, so I go to smaller grocery stores. It's just so big, I don't like to go. And I used to work there as a kid, so that kind of ruined me. But why do we keep doing sports activities, spending money with people that tell us that this don't matter? See, I don't have to answer for what you do. You do. And when someone says something contrary to what Jesus stands for, I'm out forever. I won't spend money with you. I don't care if it's the very thing I need. I won't do it. Because guess what? I serve the God of the open hand and he can get me anything I need anytime. I don't need it from that resource. I get it from somebody else. When are we going to hold people accountable? When are we going to hold sports teams accountable? Why haven't you sent an email to the sports teams? They listen. Tell you what, if there's one thing that listens, it's sports teams. They're very sensitive to what people say. Yelp has helped a lot of restaurants get their stuff together. But you can't Yelp sports teams. But you can email their SID, well, that's college, but you can do their sports information people, they listen. Right now, a Premier League soccer coach is probably going to be fired today because they listen to the fans. And they tried to burn the chairman's house down. And they want him gone too, and he'll probably be gone by the end of the year. Does that work, and is it effective? Yeah. Why didn't you do it? Why didn't you call the sports teams this week? Why didn't you email the politicians? Why don't we do these things? This is why your 2022 won't be different from 2021. Selfish. Now, it may not necessarily be you guys, but we as a church are selfish. How many people do I talk to every single week that swear they're Christians that check the box Christianity? I was talking to one of my friends the other day. You've got to remember, I was a death metal guy, so I, I know all the lyrics to every song. He thought it was cool that a church here in town was playing Stairway to Heaven for their first song in church. I'm a Zeppelin fan, right? I'll say that now. Zeppelin rocks. I cried when they broke up. I'm not the only person here that did. But have you ever listened to the lyrics of that song? It ain't about Jesus. None of their songs are, actually. Aleister Crowley, just look it up. Jimmy Page is a Satan worshiper, or was, or was in closet. Why are we having to introduce secularism to the church? Why don't we introduce the church to the secular world? You will never hear any of the songs at this church. I'm not going to do it. God doesn't need me to help him. He needs to help me. 
Why did the guy die when he grabbed the ark when it was starting to slide? God didn't need his help. Did everybody else step back when that, that ark started to slide after that? Was he supposed to break the rules and touch that ark? No. Indiana Jones, what happened to those guys when they opened the ark? That's happened before. So why are we as the church taking orders from the world? What's the other way it should be? The world should be taking orders from us. So are you guys ready to stand up in the year 2022? Because we know it's going to be, all hell's going to break loose, not only in this country, but all over the world. But we're the guiding light. Are you the light or the darkness? You've got to choose. Because you want to be provided for. He's already said, man, I got this. You just fall on your knees. You repent. Because the church should repent, right? Should the church repent for everything we've let happen in the last two years? Yeah. And again, I'm talking about the ecclesia, not necessarily us. But I'm talking about the church as a worldwide whole. We've let them use a pandemic that was fake. 99 point, I got a better chance. Remember, 99.98. I have a better chance of being run over in the parking lot by pygmies from South America who have never driven than I do dying from that illness. Or dying in a hurricane, tornado, and a volcano simultaneously. Who took statistics in college besides Warren? <laughs> Warren didn't, David, me. All right, there's a few of us. If you do the statistics of what it would take to die from this, it's nearly impossible. Here's the thing. You're afraid of an illness you're going to get for seven days, you're going to be sick. Then you're going to be well. And then you have natural immunity against it. If you're afraid after that, you're an idiot. <laughs> and you can't do mathematics. I do statistical probabilities of every single thing I do, including before I shop. You can ask my wife. Everything goes in the spreadsheet. I also did a statistical probability of God ever let me down. Zero. If God's with us, who can be against us? In 2022, it's going to take more fortitude than you've ever had. It's going to take a deeper spiritual relationship. If you're married, you better be praying every single day together. You better be going through the scriptures together. You better be doing them with your kids daily. But God's already promised that you'll have a better financial year. You'll better have a spiritual year. You'll have everything better this year if you'll just do it his way. Are you willing to take the deal? Yes or no? I can't answer that for you. But what I will answer is when I start to see more chairs filled up. Because that means you're out proclaiming his gospel to the world. Because is every pulpit proclaiming the gospel today of power, love, and faith? No. We're out trying to get seeker-friendly churches and make everybody feel good. Again, is it my job to make you feel good? Wait till Charlotte, baby. I make them uncomfortable every time I go up there. But what's my job? Was it my job to make my players comfortable at halftime? My poor players, they walk in halftime going, oh, no. And then it would be great when I just walked in and went, all right, we've got to play better. And I'd walk out. I walked in one time and said, everybody needs to play better. Y'all need to make a decision. I walked back out and sat on the bench. We won by 30. They didn't need me to yell at them. They knew what they needed to do. Do y'all need me to come to your house every day and yell at you? Or are y'all good? What's that commercial where the guy gets a megaphone and he goes to somebody's house every day and yells at him? It's hilarious. Or the one where everybody becomes their parents. I've never seen any of these commercials, so I'm new to all this stuff. You can thank John Wick for me seeing commercials. All right, is everybody ready to make a commitment? Now let's get to the liar list. I know I'm going long, but I haven't gotten to preach in weeks. So y'all are getting the full effect of me not getting to preach. All right, I'll sum this up in five or ten minutes. If you're listening by home, no, not every sermon's going to be this long, I promise. Liar list. Did I spell that right? All right. If you're new to me at home, I have trouble reading and writing, so spelling's not exactly my strength. All right, so you make a list for 2022 of everything you want but can't do without God's help. Like, you know, I'm going to lose 25 pounds. I, I kind of got that. I don't really need God's help. I used to be a powerlifter or a bodybuilder. I got this. Um, but what do I want supernaturally to take place this year that I can't do on my own? And then I just write one, two, three, four. And then I put scripture with each one. 
And once I do that, I write it down on a piece of paper, I fold it up, put it in an envelope, put your name on it, put liar list, and bring it to me next week. I never look at these. So make sure you have a copy, because I will never see what's in that envelope. See, we will think that January from December is going to change us. But does anything change about you guys? I still like ice cream. That's just not eating it right now. I still like cupcakes, even though I'm allergic to them. I still like Cracker Barrel pancakes, even though I have not been. My, my food taste didn't change. My love for my wife didn't change. Nothing changed. My self-discipline had to change. My approach to me had to change. My commitment to me had to change. My commitment to Christ had to change. My commitment to study had to change. You can ask my wife. I always go, I haven't studied enough. I don't study enough. Baby, how much do I study? Yeah. But Billy Graham, I'll never forget this. I felt defeated after this. They asked Billy Graham the biggest disappointment he had in life while he was alive. I just couldn't study enough. I was like, if Billy Graham didn't study enough, who could study more? <laughs> Billy Graham. Without Billy Graham and David, but without Billy Graham laying the foundation, because I'm from Charlotte, I wouldn't be here. Because even though I was a sinner and a demon from hell, I trusted Billy Graham. And being from Charlotte, I knew I could believe him. I just didn't believe what he was saying. But I knew I could trust him. And then as I got older and then got to be part of that ministry, you could trust him. So you write down exactly what you want based on the Holy Spirit's help and God's help that you can't do on your own. And what's it normally fall under? Financial. What else? Social. Physical. You know. Spiritual. Now, the spiritual is normally you want to speak in tongues, your prayer language. Uh, you want to, I mean, look how many people have been able to see Jesus. Uh, Tom has, right? Tom Scarella. Tom was with us. Um, I've only seen the other side. I didn't ask for that, trust me. But what do you want? What do you want? This forces you to write down exactly what you want. If you look at it every single day, you'll do it. Because now you know what you got to do. Did I have any problems telling my ball team what we had to do every single day? No. If they didn't know, trust me, coach was going to tell them. Do we have any problems telling our kids what they got to get done? Does your boss have any problem? Well, a lot of us are self-employed. But does your boss have any problems telling you what you got to do? No. Does your wife have any problem telling you what we should do? No. Okay. When in doubt, if you need to know who you are, where you're going, and what you need to do, just ask your wife. She'll give you an honest opinion. People used to ask me sometime, they used to be like, since you're da 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 do you ever think, no, I got a wife, man. I just go home and ask who I really am. She'll tell me. My wife's very clear on who I am and where I'm going. So now you put all this down on your list. You put the scripture that goes with it and you put it in an envelope, give it to me next week. Please don't mail me anything. Just keep them to yourself. Um, but do this exercise. You just don't have to mail them to us. But this will change your life if you will do it. I introduced this how many years ago? Five. Four or five. Um, and I do it with my clients. And my clients have seen more growth. It's amazing. They'll go, I had no idea. But it's very discouraging to get up year after year and nothing's changed, isn't it? Especially when you're in your 50s and older, you sit and go, oh, I wasted that year. How did I waste five years? How did I waste 10 years? You know, with our generation, what's our obsession? Retirement, right? Everybody's obsessed with retirement. And if, golly, I didn't realize there were so many retirement commercials on TV now. Pharmaceuticals and retirement. You're either going to die of this or you're going to run out of money, right? I figured that out this week watching TV. <clears throat> Why are we so obsessed with retirement? Do Christians get to retire? No. Pastors ever get to retire? I have to die in the pulpit. When I took the deal, I had to take the deal and I have to die preaching. That's the expectation. That's why you see... Now you see Kenneth Copeland's 85. Bill Winston's in his late 70s. Remember, he was a pilot in Vietnam, even though he looks great. Uh, Richard Roberts is 74. I mean, that used to, I remember when guys used to retire at 65. Now you're seeing pastors keep going. Charles Stanley is 80. Golly, we went to his 80th birthday party together. No, 87, 88. Yeah, we were his 80th birthday party. So I, I do remember that. This is a lifelong commitment. Isn't it good to be with your creator on a daily basis? And he said he would never let you down if you just spend time with him. Right? A lot of us didn't have dads we could go to and talk to, right? 
My dad was never there. I, I didn't get to know my dad until three months before he died. So if you'll take the deal, he's good for it. If you want to know if you're stupid or not, just call me. <laughs> I'm always open to telling you. But am I also the guy you guys get in touch with when something's gone wrong? And I don't call you stupid, do I? Nope. No. I give you the verses, I give you the videos to watch, and I pray for you. Does prayer work? Or are we a praying church? Yes. Yeah. People call us from all over the world to get prayer. All over the world we get calls for prayer. All right, everybody stand up and we'll bless this and get out of here. Thank you for tuning in right now. What we'll have is prayer for our church and tithing. If you want to be part of our church and giving, uh, we greatly appreciate it. This goes out all over the world. Uh, EncounterChrist.org is how you reach us. You go over to the give button and, and go down. If not, I'm Pastor Scott Farrell. I'll see you next week. Thanks so much for tuning in. All right, every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for giving us the ultimate power, you. Thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit that will get us through every single situation. Thank you for giving us victory, if we choose victory, through your power. Jesus, thank you for shedding your blood on the cross. Thank you for giving me the right hand of the Father to see that with you. Thank you for making 2022 the best year in every single category that I have, that I've ever seen. And we have more salvations and church growth than we've ever seen. We ask this in your name. Amen.